Well, hello everyone. Welcome to our quantitative history webinar. Uh, today we are very honored to have uh, Mr. Pei Yuan Li. Uh, he is a he is currently a senior PhD candidate of economics at the University of Colorado Boulder to present his very interesting research. Uh, it's about how the media propaganda affect the nation building. Uh, using the context of historical China in the late Qing period. Uh, as you may know, Pei Yuan's this paper just won the best paper award uh, at the symposium on quantitative history uh, last year. Uh, we, are, we, we, also, we are also uh, happy to have a discussion uh, uh, Mr. Bo Xiaozhang. He is now a senior PhD candidate and the UCLA Economics Department. And Bo Xiao will give uh, about 15 minutes discussion after Pei Yuan's one hour presentation. And finally, we will leave several minutes for Q&A from the audience. So for the audience, if you have a question, please feel free to, to leave your question in our Q&A box. OK, so now welcome Pei Yuan. OK, uh, first let me share screen. Okay, so first I want to thank uh, Professor Zhi uh, Wucheng and uh, Chi Chen Ma for giving me this opportunity to present my work and uh, listen to feedback. Uh, and also thank uh, uh, HQ for coordinating this uh, webinar. Okay, so first let me, uh, then let me introduce myself. I'm PNL from University of Colorado Boulder. Okay, and I will be on my case this year later. Now let's talk about this paper. So the topic of this paper is political repression, media propaganda, and the nation building. Sorry. Okay, so first to motivate this paper, uh, Nation building. So nation building is a process to make the national community become uh, unified or congruent. And it consists of efforts made by the rulers, such as the adoption of state religion, expulsion of minority, as well as the control of the national language. But before the nation build the process of nation building, the first step is to invent or create or catch up the idea of nation. The first case of nation building, the modern nation building, uh, was the French uh, Revolution. So when the French rulers started to make efforts to form the so-called Frenchmen. And it's the same for China. So China's modern nation building belonged to the wave of nation building starting from uh, French Revolution to the mid uh, 20th century or even today. And uh, this paper, the first question the paper wants to answer is how the uh, revolutionary propagandists in the late team uh, used the, uh, to use the uh, communication technology to uh, build a modern nation. The outcome variable is uh, revolutionary uh, participation. And the story here is that the, the propagandists used the new technology, the newspapers, uh, and the new ideas about modern nation, uh, but borrowed the historical materials in. Uh, 200 years before to incentivize the anti manchu segment and finally successfully attracted the young intellect, young idiots uh, in China as well as overseas to join the revolutionary campaign. And the second part of this paper will answer the question uh, about the process from the nation building to nation state building. And the graph below shows the logic chain of this paper. Uh, first, uh, event is a political repression happened in the mid 17th century, uh, especially around 1644. And after 200 years, of, uh, years uh, when the uh, newspaper was introduced into China, the propaganda used the newspapers to sell their ideas about uh, the modern nation, but they borrowed the historical uh, stories about the political repression. 
So it's not a persistent effect from 200 years ago to the contemporary output. It, it was incentivized by the newspapers. And the second part of this, part of this paper, we discuss uh, the nation's still building uh, efforts made by the Kuomintang government or party. Sorry. Okay, the premium main fundings. I found that revolutionary propagandists took advantage of retelling of the political repression and resistance 200 years ago to fan the flames of this content towards the Manchu led Qing government. And specifically, prefectures with historical repression and uh, resistance re responded more to the anti Manchu propaganda and produces, produced the more revolutionaries. And after the success of the 1911 revolution, uh, the, the core of the uh, revolutionary team, those formed the KMT party army as well as the government. So that is the outcome of the nation state building. Okay, so next is the uh, literature uh, contribution to the literature. So this paper may be related to many literature. The first uh, series of literature I want to emphasize is uh, the literature about uh, political repression. That is a small but rising literature. Uh, and we can see that the first, the first paper here, Yangizawa wrote. So uh, this paper discussed the role of radio in the Rwanda massacre or genocide. And the second paper by Adena discussed the role of radio in the uh, rise of the Nazi activity, pro Nazi activities. And uh, all of this paper you analyzed the radio was based on uh, locations and to, to design the treatment. Uh, but there might be other ideas in the, in the idea market. So this paper, my paper is text based. I will analyze different uh, ideas and different uh, sentiments in the propaganda and compare the effectiveness of different uh, sorts of ideas. And the second series of literature is about the persistent influence of culture and politics. And among this literature, the close, closest study is from Fuka and the Wolves. So they discussed, they uh, studied the, the, during the Euro crisis, uh, the propaganda of the uh, Nazis massacre in Greece, Greece, in Greece uh, caused the pe Greece people to uh, buy less, buy less uh, German-made cars. And uh, this paper uh, is discussed the period when the new technology newspaper was brought into China and brought new ideas into the, to the, to the public discussion. And the most interestingly, I think there's a recent discussion on the 1911 revolution. So the first the famous paper is from Bai and Jia. So they discussed that uh, the uh, the revolution was the revolutionary participation was the result of abolishing the exam system. And the second paper by Martini and Chen, so they discussed the role of anti missionary uh, protests in the late Qing and found that uh, uh, local alias members used the nationalism to organize anti foreign or anti missionary protests as well as to form nationalist political organizations. And the third paper from uh, Kun and Wang, Professor Kun and Wang. So uh, this stressed the, foreign, the role of foreign education in the political transformation from the late team to the Republic area. And the, the last one is from the discussant Zhang. So he uh, stressed the role of the communication infra infrastructure. And uh, my paper uh, is related to all these studies. Uh, but uh, I discussed the 1911 revolution through the view of nation building. And I will all, also test all these hypotheses together. And the next uh, literature is about nation building and nation state building. So uh, as we all know, the famous book from Anderson, uh, so he discussed that throughout the process of nation building, print media played play a key role. So the imaginative community uh, book. And I think my paper provides evidence to his argument, uh, the role of print media in the uh, nation building. And then lastly, I adopted machine learning to, dealing with, to deal with 
uh, millions of uh, article titles. So I think uh, that may be related to the uh, recent rising literature on the applied application of machine learning economics. Okay, this is the outline and let's give to the historical background. So I think we are all familiar with this timeline, the dynasty change in China history. So I don't want to stress that, but coming to the historical background, let's focus on the period in the, 19, in the mid uh, 17th century, especially in 1644, that's the transition from the Qin Empire, Ming Empire to the Qin Empire. And uh, we all know that in 1644, the, the, uh, the Farmer Rebellion occupied the, uh, the capital city Beijing and the Qing regime, the Manchu-led Qing regime uh, took, took advantage of this uh, event and occupied China uh, in 1644 in one year and finished the conquering China in the next uh, two decades. And uh, along with the uh, military invasion, the, the Qing, uh, Manchu-led Qing government uh, encountered uh, fierce resistance in the, in the south uh, because the north have been destroyed by the peasant rebellions, so there's no organized uh, resistance in the south. But in the, uh, in the north, but in the south, uh, scholar officials still can, uh, they can, they, they could organize themselves and continue to fight to restore the Ming Dynasty. And they, they established four different uh, South Ming regimes to fight against uh, the uh, Qing's invasion. And the famous leading figure here is uh, Shi Kefa. We, also, we all know him. So he's a senior government official in the Ming Dynasty, served as the Ministry of War for the Nanjing Court, the South Ming Court, and they established a defense between the Huaihe River and Yangtze River to defend against the Manchu's invasion. Though finally uh, uh, failed, uh, but many uh, scholar officials still uh, made their, their efforts to restore the Ming Dynasty. And uh, along with the resistance, there were, be, there were massacres. So along with the military invasion, the Manchu-led Qing government committed massacres, the genocide to punish the residents who refused to serve the Qing's rule and to warn the rest of the population. And the famous case here is the uh, 10 days in Yangzhou. And according to uh, Professor Chao's estimation, about uh, uh, 80, 800,000 people were killed in 10 days. That is called 10 days in Yangzhou. And uh, according to Professor Chao's estimation, in at least 18 prefectures, the Qing troops killed about 2 million Han Chinese people. So that's the uh, uh, event for the commoners, but how about intellectuals? So uh, intellectuals response and repression. Uh, a hundred of, uh, a large number of uh, Han Chinese scholar officials refused to serve the Qing court. They uh, collected documents, compiled the historical books and wrote poetry documenting the Perish the Ming and the Southern Ming resistance through the power of personal memory. So those people were called the Ming loyalists. And the famous case, uh, the famous leading figure here is Li Liu Liang. So he was active in the anti-Manchu efforts. After the resistance failed, he became a, a hermit. In his book, he argued that the Manchus as an alien race should not rule China. Liu's book inferited the Qing government, the Yongzheng Empire. Emperor. So Li spoke, uh, his book was forbidden and uh, his corpse and that of his son were exhumed and executed again. So that's the punishment uh, after the death. And uh, the first event is the uh, Inquisition. So Manchu rulers were persistent in uh, molding Han Chinese people's ideology. Uh, from 1644 to 1790, the end of the uh, Qianlong rule. Uh, the government, the Qing government, prosecuted the Han Chinese intellectuals if they were suspected of inciting disloyalty towards the emperor or the state in their writings. So that is called the in literary inquisition. Hundreds of scholars were killed or exiled, and some were even uh, executed again after the death. And the famous case is this poem. So in the poem, the, the, the author writes, 
uh, put the word murky before the before the clear, but the clear also pronounce the same as as Qing. So the emperor think that this it shows the disloyalty of the author. So he was uh, the author was executed. Okay, that's a historical background about the political repression in the middle uh, 17th century. And coming to the end of the 19th century, the newspaper technology was introduced into China. And we can see that along with the Opium War, the new founded, this graph shows the new founded newspapers in China or overseas written in Chinese. And we can see that uh, newspapers started to appear after the Opium War, and it, uh, it peaked the first lay in the period of the 100 days reform. And then after the Boxer Rebellion in 1900, uh, it brought the number of new funded newspapers blossomed. Uh, both for all newspapers or newspapers focused on political issues as well as uh, newspapers funded by the revolutionaries. Okay, so uh, how about the anti-Manchu or the revolutionary campaign? We know that at the end of the 19th century, led by Sun Yat-sen, the first uh, revolutionary group was took shape, took shape in Hawaii in, uh, in 1894, and it's called the Revived China Society. And from uh, 1903 to 1906, the five new groups were established, two new groups and the Revived China Society merged into the uh, Chinese revolutionary allies in 1905. And to generate more interest in re the revolutionary moment, the revolutionary propagandists adopted a slogan based on ethnic-based anti-mentrism for propaganda. And then let's go de detail into, into the propaganda. So the Chinese revolutionary allies drafted the political Manifesto, so we can re recall this from the uh, high school textbook that is uh, to expel the Tata uh, Manchus to revive China. So the revolutionary's first object was to over overturn the Manchu led Qing government and bring the, back, the regime back to the Han Chinese. And in the uh, famous pamphlet titled The Revolutionary Army, uh, the, the author wrote that. Zhang Taiyan wrote that China had been subjunct subjunct by the Manchus for 2060 years. Our Han Chinese suffer cruel lives at the, hand of, at the hands of Manchus. So everyone has a responsibility to overturn the Manchu led Qing, Qing regime. And then let's uh, see more about the propaganda. So then in the newspaper articles, historical repression 200 years ago were utilized to make a story about ethnic conflicts, how the Manchu led Qing government repressed the Han Chinese. And uh, in two newspapers founded by revolutionaries, we can find the story here. So the graph, the, the paper on the uh, left, that is a, a newspaper article from the Zhongguo Baihua in 1904. So, we can see that the title is a record of 10 days young Zhou. So this newspaper used uh, uh, maybe 12 volumes to reprint the famous book, 10 days in young Zhou, a record of 10 days in young Zhou. And the right-hand side uh, paper, a graph that is uh, a paper discussing, uh, introducing the story about Shi Kefa. So the title is a biography of Shi Kefa who shed his blood for the nation. So you can see that the propaganda borrowed the story of repression 200 years ago to find the flames of this content. And the more systematic evidence uh, was shown here. And uh, uh, the database was based on the full text journals in the late Qing from Shanghai Library. So uh, the title was uh, digitalized. So I just uh, searched uh, keywords in the database and, and uh, this drew the frequency of the, these keywords. The, the graph on the top, the left, the, left, uh, the left one on the top, that is the frequency of the word nation as well as ethnicity. Uh, the peak uh, in the beginning might be due to the less 
the, the few uh, observations. But we can see that after the 1900, uh, there's a rise trend in the frequency of the ethnicity as well as nation. So it means that the people start to talk about nation as well as ethnicity. And uh, the second graph, the, the one on, on the right on the, in, uh, at the top, so that is the fre frequency of the world, the Han people as well as Manchu people, and uh, we see the sh same uh, pattern. And the left four uh, sub-figures shows the frequency for the world 10 days in Yangzhou, the little inquisition, Shi Kefai, as well as lowest, three famous lowest. And we can find that uh, starting from 1900, uh, someone was discussing these topics in the newspapers. Okay, I would like to skip these details. And uh, the question comes, uh, whether the propaganda is, was effective in incentivized the revolutionary participation or not. So I took this case, this guy is called Chiu Ao. So he is a revolutionary from Hunan province. He's, in his autobiography, he said that he read books written by Wang Fuzhi, a mean lawyer who lived in Hunan province. Later he learned of the massacres and later inquisition from pamphlets issued by revolutionary propagandists. And with these readings, he de developed an anti-Manchu attitude. And when he had, had the opportunity to study in Japan in 1904, he met revolutionaries there and joined them. So that is the case to show that uh, uh, the propaganda successfully mobilized the uh, young intellectuals to join the revolutionary uh, groups. And in summary, the propaganda made Han Chinese people with themselves as a representative of the Chinese instead of the Manchus by distinguishing them from the Manchus. And uh, then let's go to the data section. Uh, uh, the data section consisted of three uh, subsections. The first one is the uh, matter of political repression and resistance in the middle 17th century. And I have, uh, I adopted the four uh, events here, the, as I discussed. The first one is the Manchu's harsh repression mirrored by massacre, number of mass massacres in each prefecture during the Manchu's conquest. And the second mirror of repression is the Inquisition, number of Inquisition cases. And about the uh, resistance made by the Han Chinese in the middle uh, 17th century, I mirrored it by two uh, variables. The first is the leading figures in the resistance. Uh, this uh, book was compiled by the, uh, by the famous uh, poet Xu uh, Dajun. So he compiled this book collect the events of the leading figures in the resistance around the 1690s. And the uh, second matter of the re resistance is the lowest. So I think is, uh, if people uh, refused to serve the team court and uh, uh, it may show this person's loyalty towards the Ming dynasty. And uh, it, it is like a soft resistance towards the Manchu invasion. Okay, this is uh, four groups, four maps shows, uh, showing the distribution, the distribution of repression and resistance. Uh, it may show a regional bias towards the Southeast region because, uh, as I said, the North region had been destroyed by the uh, farmer rebellion. So there's no uh, systematic uh, resistance. And uh, for simpl simplicity, I convert all for repression into dummies and some of them to produce a comprehensive index of the repression and the resistance. And I will also do robust to these mirrors. And the second part of the data is the mirror of the anti manchu sentiment in the propaganda. So the data is from the newspaper, is from, uh, data is from the full text of journals in the Latin database. And this database contained around 2.7 million articles from three newspapers, 300 newspapers or journals published between uh, 1853 and 1911, nearly all newspapers in the late team. And uh, for this study, I collected uh, uh, 136 newspapers with 0.3 million articles written in Chinese between the study period. 
And the first uh, mirror, first index of the anti-man true sentiment uh, was from reading. So uh, I found that in the new, in the database there were 19 newspapers funded by the revolutionaries. So the aim is to propagandize the, the revolutionary campaign. And they contained uh, not, uh, about uh, 10,000 articles. So I read this article, all of these 10,000 articles, articles one by one and classify all of the articles. So according to the following criteria, if an article contains the word Manchu or Han and this identify Manchu from Han, so I would classify it as the article with anti-Manchu sentiment. Uh, and uh, other criteria include articles on massacres, inquisition, uh, matters in resistance against the Manchu's invasion, as well as Ming Laoist. And the last one is this, they, they may also discuss the uh, Song heroes and uh, uh, Laoist, such as Wen Tianxian, as well as Yu Fei. And uh, the index is uh, time variant. And I count the number of anti Manchu articles in each. Journal J in, in year T, and then take the average to get the average share of anti manchu articles in each journal each year, and then uh, take the average to uh, get a yearly uh, uh, index. Okay, and uh, from the reading, we can see that uh, um, most uh, the, uh, paper, uh, article paper, uh, most uh, newspaper articles discuss the. the uh, Manchu Han issues, disidentify Manchu from Han, and then they discussed the matters in the resistance, mean laws, and the Inquisition was less likely to be discussed. Uh, but the, the problem of this index is that it's from reading is subjective. And the second problem is that uh, revolutionary propagandists may also publish their articles on other newspapers. So here the table shows the evidence that it shows two newspapers and this newspaper were not funded by the uh, revolutionaries and it's not, uh, it was not uh, uh, designed to propagandize the revolution. So, but we can still find that they talk, the authors talk about the Ming Matas as well as the Ming Laoists. So to elevate this concern, I, uh, adopted the machine learning to deal with all of the newspapers, all of the 136 uh, newspapers with 0.3 million articles. The challenge is that uh, the context of the text of these uh, articles was not uh, digitalized. So only the title was digitalized. So I, adop I adopted a machine learning model, the neural network model to uh, train the uh, train the article I read and then predict the, all, of the, all of the newspaper articles. So the model was, was trained by using the one, uh, 19 revolutionary newspapers. First, uh, I randomly split, split the 10,000 articles into 80% uh, for training and the rest 20% uh, for testing. And uh, the model works well to predict the uh, right classification, the right type of the uh, newspaper article. And we can see the accuracy rates were very high. And then I use this model to predict the type, whether article is anti manchu or not. And uh, finally, 2000 among these points remaining was identified as uh, anti manchu articles. And this, uh, this figure shows the uh, trend of the two indexes. The green, the blue one is from read, oh, no, the red one is from reading and the blue one that is from the uh, machine learning. And we can see that it show uh, similar patterns along with time. And the outcome variable is the same as by the jazz. So it's, it's a number of revolutionaries from uh, six revolutionary groups. And as for controls, I control uh, population, geography, characteristics, sick capacity, social capital, weather shock, traditional human capital, as well as uh, modern uh, human capital, and more variable will be included in the robustness check. As for the uh, specifications, so uh, 
the, the design based on the general difference in difference. The, var the outcome variable is the number of revolutionaries in prefecture P and the year T between 1900 and 1906. The variable of interest is the interaction between the repression, uh, the repression at prefecture level and uh, the uh, antimatter index at the year level. And this is the main result, and we can see that the coefficient uh, uh, of the interaction remain con consistent, uh, positive, significantly positive uh, uh, across different specifications. And the, as for the magnitude of the uh, coefficient based on the mean, uh, at least the propaganda and the repression interaction can explain about 29% uh, uh, to uh, to 40% of the revolutionary participation. Okay, I want to skip this. And I also uh, uh, adopted the alternative measure of the anti mention index because there's no clear evidence how the uh, revolutionary propagandists spread their informi the information uh, because the newspaper might be illegal to spread among people. And at least I find two evidences. The first one is that to join the revolutionary allies, a person need to current members, one as a referendum and one as a witness. So it means that the membership development of the group was based on the private network. And the past members introduced the new members. And the second, second evidence was from Lu Xun's uh, article. So he, uh, told us that the students brought forbidden materials from Japan back to China to spread the anti uh, movement. And uh, in this table below, I regress uh, the same specification, but in, introdu uh, introduce new interaction, the triple interactions between uh, repression in uh, anti mainstream index as well as other, other mirrors may be related to the spread of the information. The first mirror triple interaction is uh, between the interaction and the one over distance to Shanghai because Shanghai was the base of the propaganda uh, in, in, in China. And the second one is the uh, post agencies over uh, distance to Shanghai, that is to mirror the uh, spread among uh, why the post offices. And then the third mirror of the spread is the uh, revolutionaries one period earlier. And then last one is the number of the, the Japanese students, the Chinese students in Japan. And uh, the re regression results show that uh, the channel of the, the past members as well as Japanese uh, Chinese students in Japan may work more for the uh, spread of the propaganda and it strengthens the effect of the propaganda. But the other two uh, channels that did not, uh, was not supported by the aggression. Okay, and the next part is about the instrument variable. So the obvious problem of the regression is that there might be some uh, omitted variable problems. Uh, so about the design of the instrument variable. So we know that uh, the intuition is that in repression and resistance were highly correlated with senior interactions, especially Jinshi degree holders. And we know that uh, Chu Shi Si, so he served as the prime minister of the Yongli regime in the South Ming, and he got his Jinshi degree in 1616. And Shi Kefa also was a Jinshi degree holder. But the, if, if we use the, use the Jinshi degree holder as the instrument, the problem is that it, is, it was highly correlated with many confounding factors such as human capital. So that there may, may be a culture in these uh, prefectures that already existed before the propaganda. And uh, it makes us to think about individual's choice uh, individual co or cohort choice in the transition from in to team, it might be different for different cohorts. Okay, so the graph on the uh, left one shows the Jin Shi's choice in the fall of Beijing city in 1644, in when uh, the rebel, the farmer rebellions came into the came into Beijing, and. Uh, the statistics was uh, calculated by Wickman. So in his book, he 
counted the number of Jinshi degree holders who choose to who choose to uh, who choose to surrender to the uh, farmer rebellion or su committed suicide. And we can see that the blue line that is the number of uh, Jinshi degree holders that uh, surrendered to the uh, Li Zicheng's regime. And uh, the dash line is the number of Jinshi degree holders committed suicide. And uh, it seems that the group which committed suicide was on the average slightly older or gets their Jinshi degree earlier than most of the men who ended up collaborating with the former rebellion. So who committed suicide was official, well, officials who had already fulfilled their vocations as civil servants. A large number of collaborators were young officials whose bureaucratic careers, whether, the, uh, whether were just the beginning or haven't, haven't risen to an apex. So recent uh, degree uh, graduates who had not yet had the opportunity to hold office for very long were the most likely to join the rebel regime. So that's a case for the, for the choice between the peasant rebel, rebelling and the uh, main court. Uh, is it, is it, does this pattern happen for, the, happen, happen for the choice between the team dynasty and the main dynasty? I haven't finished this part, but the graph on the uh, right gives uh, uh, some of the evidence and uh, it shows the number of Jinshi degree holders of the first rank, Yijia. So serve the choose to serve the to serve the team court, and we can see that right after 1628, that is the first year of Chunzhen's rule, uh, for Jinshi degree holders who get their Jinshi uh, during Chunzhen's rule, they were more likely to serve the team court. So this is really ironically, and the most uh, ironically point is that uh, uh, for the last year for the exam ahead in the last year of the Ming Dynasty, 1643. All of these three guys uh, of the first rank choose to serve the Qing Dynasty. So it may suggest that the opportunity cost was valid in choose between the uh, farmer rebellions and the Ming court, as well as the Qing court and the Ming court. So for young scholars, uh, they, may, they may still young, so they choose to serve the new court and uh, to uh, pursue a higher position in the central government. But for old guys, they might, they might be too old, or they could, they, they could just uh, remain the same, uh, at the same positions, and the opportunity cost will be low. And the intuition of the IV design is that uh, Jinshi degree holders in the Chongzhen's reign from uh, 1628 to 1643, they were more likely to surrender. But uh, uh, for, the, for, the, for the earlier cohort, the same uh, 25 years, they were more, like, like, like they were more likely to organize uh, resistance. And I take the difference between these two, two cohorts, the number of Jingshi, the change in Jingshi from these two periods as a I Wei. And uh, it should be related to the resistance and the repression because the, rep the resistance was were organized by the Jingshi degree holders. And uh, the table below shows the correlation between the I Wei, Delta Jingshi, the change in Jingshi, as well as the repression and resistance measures. And it shows that uh, for prefectures with higher uh, new admitted Jinshi, they were more like less likely to resist and less likely to be, to be repressed. Okay, and uh, about the uh, exogenous, uh, ex whether the um, Delta Jinshi, the IV is exogenous, I regress the uh, repression mirror on the Delta Jingshi in the change in Jingshi in different periods every 25 years. And uh, the I V one is uh, the coefficient for the I V one is at D5, the green point. And we can see that uh, before it and after it, the, the, the effect of Delta Jingshi on repression, repression shows a very interesting regular uh, patterns or cycles up and down, upside and down. But for uh, Jingshi born, uh, get, who get their, got their Jingshi degree before 1600, they 
they may all died in the, in the, in 1644. And after the 1644, for the new admitted degree in Qing Dynasty, they did not face this cho choice. So I think the uh, the instrument variable is the unique uh, case in this discussion. And the two advantages exist for this IV mirror. The first advantage is that uh, it's correlated with the choice made by the Jinshi cohort resulting from the career concern instead of others. And the second is about culture. So we can see that uh, the Yangtze Delta, they, they might be, uh, uh, they accumulated a, a higher human capital and uh, they were more knowledgeable and they, they choose to keep loyalty to, towards the main court. But uh, if we took the difference, uh, I think the culture uh, in effect will be eliminated from the mirror. Okay, about the uh, uh, exclusion and restriction about the IV, I also regress the related contemporary shocks or contemporary events on the I wait. And the first mirror is contemporary event is the uh, uh, weather uh, index. Second is standard deviation of the weather. weather. The next two is a drought dummy. Then is a plaque and also uh, regress uh, the outcome such as uh, post stations in Ming Dynasty because it's related to the farmer rebellions. And then the battles between Ming and, Ming, and, Ming and the farmer rebellions as well as the depopulation caused by the Farmer rebellions, as well as uh, some mirrors may be related to resistance, the, the distance to the kingdom uh, of the Ming Dynasty, uh, the tribute. So, and as well as distance to 19. And I did not find any significant uh, correlation between the IW as well as these uh, events. And uh, then this is the uh, IW estimation. And we can, the first column shows the fixed effect. Uh, a result and the second is our column is a reduced form, third is fourth stage, and uh, uh, the first one, last one, is a result for the IV estimation. And we can see that uh, the IV estimation is solid for, for both uh, anti entry index and the FTS first stage S test was high enough to deny the weak IV hypothesis. Okay, I want to skip this. And then it's about the uh, robustness check of uh, this, my argument, because there were many uh, arguments, many factors may contribute to the 1911 revolution or the revolutionary participation. And the first one is the famous one, uh, the evolution exam quotas. And uh, I, in the, in the panel A, I, adopt my own specification, I add one interaction term between the uh, quota and uh, the anti manchu statement. And uh, I found that, uh, I found that uh, the repression errors responded more to the, uh, to the, to the revolutionary participation, uh, but the quota descent, uh, the errors with higher quota also contributed to uh, to the revolutionary participation. So both uh, arguments remained uh, solid. And uh, in the panel B, I adopted the band just specification and uh, uh, the, the argument, the result remained remain the same. And the second, second uh, hypothesis or alternative theory or competing uh, hypothesis is from Martini and Chen. So they discussed that, that the, uh, Local ADS uh, using the used the, the anti missionary conflict to 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 mobilize the protests against the Qing Dynasty, the Qing Empire, and in the panel A, I adopt my own uh, specific specification and introduce the interaction between the missionary conflicts as well as and the anti manchu index. And in panel B, uh, I address the conflicts, the missionary conflicts and the yearly fixed, the yearly uh, identical uh, fixed effect. And uh, both arguments remained consistent, uh, significant, positive. And last, uh, the third one argument is the uh, alternative theory about modernization. It might be that uh, news uh, errors exposed to 
uh, modern news, the modern information like the newspaper, telegraph station, as well as post office, they received more information from the propagandists and they re responded more to the uh, anti manchu campaign or the revolution instead of the areas with repression and resistance historical uh, stories. And uh, I introduced different methods of modernization. The first one, the treaty port dummy, I said because treaty ports enjoys the extra, extra, uh, extra uh, enjoys the uh, in advantage in the legal status. And the second mirror is the number of uh, the post office density. The third is the telegraph stations, and then the distance to Shanghai, and then the organization, as well as the modern uh, forms, and last one the Japanese students, and. Uh, among all of these competing hypotheses, uh, it seems that uh, areas with more modern forms as well as more Chinese students in Japan responded more to the propaganda. But uh, my argument still remain uh, consistent uh, quality. And uh, the next uh, hypothesis, balance check, uh, robustness check is about uh, secret society and Taiping rebellion. So historical evidence suggests that revolutionary groups recruited members of secret uh, organizations, for example, to gain the support of well known uh, secret society, Hongmen. So Song Yansen joined them as a senior figure in, in 1904. And one of the secret society, Hongmen, also called Tin Di Hui, so was a threatened organization and historically a sensitive folk religious sect in the vein of Ming Loist. And uh, another uh, may another uh, hypothesis that is that influence of the Taiping Rebellion because uh, the Taiping Rebellion was aimed at killing Manchus. And when, when they uh, controlled the Nanjing city, it killed all of the Manchu people inside of the Nanjing city. It was claimed by the Taiping propagandists that Manchus were the representative of the Sata and the Taipings were the representatives of the God. God. So they have the had the responsibility to uh, extend, to, to, to kill all the Manchu people. So I introduced the interaction between the anti-Manchu sentiment as well as uh, areas with more uh, secret society activities or the activities by the Tindi Hui as well as errors uh, controlled by the Taiping Rebellion. And uh, this hypothesis was not valid. And the last one is the accumulative Manchu Han conflict. The, the alternative hypothesis is that during the 250 years period under the Manchu's rule, uh, community conflicts between Manchus and Han was, were driven forth for revolution, revolutionary participation, especially when anti-Manchu propaganda stroked the Han nationalism. And uh, there might be some record of the crimes, but uh, the crimes was recorded in the Xinke Tiba at the national level, so it's hard to detail it into uh, prefecture level. So prefecture level. So I adopted the banner garrison that where the Number of banner people was assigned to a prefecture as a mayor of the, as a proxy of the Manchu Han conflicts because uh, at least uh, a city must have at least uh, some Manchu people lived in a city then there would be a conflict between Manchu and Han and this hypothesis is not valid uh, uh, according to the regression but the main uh, argument remained uh, positive. Okay, a uh, next uh, robust ch this check is to uh, examine the effect of other sentiments in the propaganda. So the propaganda also placed other content in the newspapers to mobilize the revolution. And uh, the newspaper article on the right, uh, it's an article showing, uh, discussing that the, the title is that the Beijing government was involved in human traffic. So I would like to, to label this article as anti-imperialism or the criticize of the corruption of the Qing government. And the right-hand side uh, paper is directly translate the, the translation of the uh, famous book, uh, The Spiritual Laws by Montesquieu. 
So I classify the newspapers into different uh, types, as well as uh, the directly translation that is called theory, as well as anti-imperialism that is uh, like anti-foreign, and then a pro uh, industrialization that is to, like to the self strength self moment. And we can see that the orange line is a uh, uh, the the left the left left hand side figure is by reading and the right hand side is by machine learning and we can see that uh, the green orange line is the anti manchu segment and the the red line is the anti foreign or anti imperialism and it peaked in the nineteen o three or nineteen o four because there's a, a war between Russia and Japan in Manchuria. And then I introduced the interaction between the prefecture level repression mirror as well as the other context, other sentiment in the propaganda that is anti imperialism, industrialization, uh, as well as uh, directly introduced the modern theory about democracy and the republic system. And uh, it seems that uh, the other one did not uh, uh, act well as the uh, anti Manchu segment. In panel B, when we, I use the index from the machine learning, the anti manchu anti sentiment and the anti-imperialism uh, worked uh, well both for, the, for attracting more members of the revolutionary groups. But for the other segment, uh, it may not, not work well. And uh, the last column, uh, that is to introduce the interaction between the repression mirror and the competing theory, the constitutionalism. Uh, I didn't read the newspaper, but just account the number of newspapers uh, funded by newspapers funded by the revolution, uh, the, the constitutionalists. And it seems that uh, it, it did not work to in, uh, in mobilizing the revolutionary uh, participation. Okay, uh, and then it's a, it's a placebo test. So there might be like arguments that the repression produced an area that is hard to, that, that was hard to control during the Qing Dynasty. And so uh, the propaganda just to provide the opportunity for these areas to act. So I regret the incidents of rebellions in the Qing Dynasty on the repression era and did not find the uh, correlation. Uh, I think uh, that is due to the rebellions was mirrored by the farmer rebellions and during the Qing dynasty, the aliens uh, did not uh, fight against the Qing's rule. And then let's go to the second part of this paper that's, that, that's from the uh, nation building to the nation state building. So the question is how did nationalism driven revolutionaries affect the building of a nation state after the 1911 uh, revolution. Okay, so the first outcome, outcome of nation state that is to form the modern uh, election of the National Assembly, the House and the Senate. So the first national wide election of, the, of China was had in 19, 1912, and uh, which is the biggest uh, election in, in China history about uh, 40, 40 million uh, people were eligible for uh, vote, voting, they are represents. And uh, the, the, the new founded Kuomintang, the KMT, uh, which, is, uh, which is just uh, uh, consisted of the members from the uh, revolutionary allies. And it won the majority in the House and the Senate. And uh, the party, as well as a, a party. So in 1990, Sun Yan sen resurrected the KMT as the Nationalist Party of China in Guangzhou. So among the 45, uh, 44, uh, 24 members of the first KMT standing member, 19 had previously been members of Chinese revolutionary allies, and then 14 joined it in 1905 and 1906, the study period in the first, uh, uh, in the first section. And uh, the third outcome is the army. So Sun Yan-sen set the Wangpo uh, Military Academy uh, in Guangzhou in, in 1924. We all know that. So graduates of Wangpo Military Academy became high-ranking military officers of the KMT government later. And uh, since we know that uh, the KMT 
party was crafted and largely based on private network to develop its members. So we would like to see that uh, the development of these outcomes, the party army government, as well as the uh, uh, assembly was a result of the efforts made by the early stage revolutionaries in the first section. And the evidence here is that uh, uh, from Sun Yansen's speech, he said that uh, for the uh, Huangpu Military Academy, the provinces were under the arrow here of the warlords. So it was not, not easy to openly recruit students. So the delegates to the first national Congress of the party were interested in advance to enroll the dissidents back home. And uh, here are the two evidence that uh, uh, the, the, the standing committee member of the KMT Zorong recommended the famous general Fan Hanjie and uh, then the, the other famous standing member of the, the, of the KMT Yu Ren recommended the Du Yuming, Guan Yingzhen and the Zhang, Zhang, Heng, uh, Zhang Ling, sorry. And lastly, the government. So I regret the outcome of nation state building on the repression measure first in the panel A, and we could find a positive a uh, correlation between the out national state, a uh, nation nation state outcome and the repression measure. But how can we link the things happened in mid 17th century and the early 20th century? So the mechanism is that uh, the nation state outcome was a result of the uh, early stage revolutionaries. So. After the 1911 revolution, they made uh, efforts to form the KMT uh, party government, uh, party army government. And in panel B, I regret the nation, build, nation state building outcome on the early stage revolutionaries, that is the uh, uh, outcome that were in the first section. So this start, it's a sum of the revolutionaries between 19, 1900 and 1906 and uh, the coefficients were all positive and it shows the mechanism, uh, confirms the mechanism. Okay. Okay, so here I come to at the end. I would like to uh, con uh, conclude this paper. So this paper investigated the impact of the anti-Manchu propaganda on revolutionary participation, utilizing modern, modern newspaper technology, revolutionary propagandists, took advantage of the retelling the story 2,100 years ago, the repression to find the flames of this town content and towards the Qing government and success successfully, uh, this, they uh, attracted more people to join the revolutionary uh, campaign. And after the 1911 revolution, uh, the early stage revolutionary strove to establish a modern nation state by organizing the party, army, and the government. And uh, I think this paper provides a new, a novel view of the 1911 revolution through the view of a nation building. And uh, it's a global story starting from French revolution and uh, the, even today. Okay, I think I can stop here and uh, uh, leave time for the discussion. Well, thank and, you so much, Pierre was an excellent talk so now uh, it's our discussion time uh, we are very happy to have uh, mr bo xiao Zhang from ucla uh, department of economics uh, bo xiao try to restrict your discussion within 15 minutes okay thank you yeah uh thank you thank you for uh inviting me to discuss this uh very very interesting paper and uh thank you for patience uh very interesting presentation. So uh, I think uh, this paper talks about uh, how media propaganda used the historical political repression for mobilization. And it finds that these media propaganda successfully encouraged, encouraged people to join revolutionary organizations and also help nation building uh, during China's transformation to a modern country. Uh, and this paper, talks about or focus about focus on a very important historical episode 
uh, in China's history, the 1911 Chinese Revolution. This is a key step of China to transform from imperial empire to modern country. And of course, there would be many previous literature to talk about all kinds of reasons that lead to this revolution. And I think uh, one very important reason that the anti manchu uh, Manchu propaganda has rarely been discussed before, and this paper actually filled this gap. Uh, uh, and uh, I think this paper also has a has a much broader contribution than that because it talks about the role of media propaganda in regime change and nation building. Uh, this is a very interesting question, and we don't have uh, many opportunities to examine the role of media propaganda in this special cases. And this paper provides uh, empirical evidence about these uh, important questions, uh, like or the role of propaganda in the mobilization in social movement and how the, the role of nationalism in the process of building a modern nation's identity. So I think uh, I want to provide several uh, suggestions to this paper. Uh, uh, I think uh, uh, pay, I would like like pay you and to interrupt and discuss with me if uh, you have any thoughts. So uh, first, I think the main finding, the first part, uh, main finding of this paper is to show that places with repression and resistance responded more to the anti manchu propaganda and produced more revolutionaries. I think it's, uh, I think pay you and uh, showed a lot of work to say that other reasons would not actually uh, harm these results. And I think this is very important. Uh, my suggestion is, is that uh, maybe it's it would be more interesting to talk about the exact channel, like how did propaganda about these historical repressions motivate people to join revolutionary uh, organizations? So I, I, I think of uh, two possible channels. Of course, I think there will be more possible channels. So I think the first possible channel could be like new information, like. Uh, I don't know about these historical repressions before, and this newspapers actually helped me learn about this repression. Uh, and then after I learned this historical events, I decided, okay, I want to join the revolution. Uh, so uh, I think maybe you could find some like articles in newspapers that mention specific repression and resistance in events in history. And uh, I'm not sure if you can construct a variable that such as, uh, this repression P, T minus one, like some specific repression related to prefecture P was mentioned yeah, yeah. in year P minus one. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, in, need, need, I think it needs not to be like exactly happened, the things exactly happened in that prefecture, maybe like in the same province, like, like related enough to this yeah. prefecture, like would motivate me as a, as, a, as, as a people, as a person from this prefecture to join the revolution. Another channel, I guess, it maybe could be local memory. Like this, I know about these repressions and resistance before, and this propaganda just uh, remind me of it. And then, uh, like before, I just thought, okay, it's war. Like, okay, it's Ming Dynasty, it's Dynasty before Qing Dynasty. And then now I read about these articles, I, I realize that, okay, this is a this is Manchu Han conflict. This is something that I should care about. And then I decide, like, to uh, join the revolution. So if this is the case, I guess maybe you can test that um, like people from different places which experience different types of uh, repression, they could respond to maybe different types of propaganda. Like uh, if I, I, I'm in a, I, I'm from a prefecture that has a massacre before and then I'm, I will be very sensitive to like the propaganda or articles about the massacre. Right. Um, so uh, yeah. So that's my uh, first uh, suggestion. That uh, it'd be very interesting to know the channel. Uh, yeah, it's very interesting to uh, do the local memory one because I have collected the variable of uh, private library in the Qing period. So it might be used to uh, as a proxy of the how oh. local memory was preserved. Yeah, preserved. Yeah. Oh yes, yes. Yes. So uh, yeah. So uh, my second suggestion is about the second part of the results. It's about uh, the propaganda's impact on nation building. So I think you find that after the revolution, uh, places with more rep with repression actually they also produced more political elite. 
so I think my question is, if this is a mechanical or still about ideology, I think maybe both uh, are true. Like it's mechanical because if you have more revolutionaries, then after you overthrow the old government, then you would have new, like a more political elite in the new government. So, uh, but it's, it, it could also be, um, it could also uh, be related to ideology. Like it, since you have this propaganda before the revolution, then after that, you would have more people maybe support for nationalism or some specific political idea. And you would have more people that want to went into politics. So uh, I think you show many like a dependent variable, like, like from uh, like a Huangpu Academy, like uh, the national election, like the Kuomintang's elite. Uh, so I think some of it is about mechanical, some of, of it I think it's about ideology and like a, maybe it's more interesting to differentiate it and uh, yeah. like, yeah, talk about these two channels. Yeah, yeah so that would be my uh, second suggestion. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I, I have some minor suggestions. Uh, so the first thing is, uh, I think it's it's clever to use a panel regression and the key regressor is the, uh, you have repression in the place and multiplied by the propaganda in the last year. Uh, I think in general, this uh, setup is to uh, compile the relationship between revolutionary and propaganda in different years, right? Uh, yeah. So, uh, I mean, uh, I think it could be it could be better to show to show the cross sectional results in different years, like it, it just to be the correlation between revolution and repression, but in yeah. different years, how this would change in different years, and uh, like the coefficient, the changing coefficients would be correlated with the propaganda, I guess. Uh, and also, uh, I noticed that uh, in, in table two in appendix, I think it showed that places with different types of repression could actually produce different amounts of revolutionaries when they receive the same level of uh, propaganda. I think it'd be interesting to have an explanation for that, like uh, uh, for a place to have uh, mean lawyers, uh, like uh, to, to, for a place to have uh, a massacre and for a place to have a mean lawyer, uh, like they would uh, respond differently to the same level of propaganda. Uh, like, a, I mean, a, I think it's true, but uh, I mean, a, a explanation about that would be very interesting. And also for the long-term effect, I think the, um, uh, you did lots of work to uh, exclude uh, the potential uh, long-term effects of repression and resistance and say that this is not the reason like drive the results and I do believe it so there's about Manchu Han conflicts there's about boxer rebellion there's about rebellions in Ho Chi dynasty uh, I, I just try to provide some suggestions like uh, maybe uh, there's other things you can dig like uh, legal cases in the place like local governors or political elite in Qing dynasty I think the key thing is uh, whether the Qing government uh, ruled these places with repression differently than other places, uh, or like they are the same in 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 the eye of the Qing Empire. Yeah, so uh, that'll be my uh, uh, discussion, and uh, thank you for having me discuss this very interesting paper. Okay, thank you, Bo Xiao. So Pei Yuan, you can respond and yeah. uh, discuss with Bo Xiao. Yeah. yeah, thanks, Boshia. I think those are very helpful comments and great comments. Uh, the first uh, about the channels you mentioned, the local memory as well as uh, uh, new information. Uh, yeah, I, as I said, I, I could do both. Uh, uh, yeah, I can use the private library in the Qin Dynasty as a proxy of the local memory because there's uh, historical evidence showing that uh, some uh, scholars or idiots, they keep the memory of the Ming, Lord, Ming dynasty, uh, at least for the for the propagandist Zhang Taiyan. So he said in his autobiography that uh, uh, from very many uh, generations before, after the fall of the Ming dynasty, though their families served the, the Qing court, but after death, their family members will they wear the, wear the different uh, uh, clothes. They wear the means clothes instead of teens. So they cut their uh, tail and the, and the, uh, 
and where the new the hair cuts the same as Ming uh, dynasty. So that might be the, the, the evidence of the memory, the long memory. Uh, yes, about the uh, different type of the inquisitions in, in the appendix, I show the uh, regression results uh, replacing the general uh, repression measure with the specific measure of repression, inquisition, massacre, Lois, and the Matas or leading figures. And it's, it seems that uh, the uh, Matas, uh, Lois, as well as massacres, those results were robust. But for Inquisition, that one uh, was, not, was not significant using the machine learning index. So it may imply that uh, maybe, uh, as I listed in the showing the slides, so the uh, Lois and um, Matas were more likely to be propagandized, but the Inquisition was less likely to discuss to be discussed. And it's a good idea to to see the uh, whether uh, whether the newspaper articles discussed the specific area of the repression. Yes, so uh, in the newspaper articles, um, one specific uh, one uh, instance is just uh, the uh, Yangzhou. Uh, Massacre, so we can see that uh, Yangzhou was mentioned, mentioned several times in other regions. Uh, yeah, I can uh, collect the information on the repression, regional repression uh, in the propaganda and uh, remake the uh, index of the, the index, the anti mentor index. Uh, yes, I think uh, uh, that's what I want to respond. And I think those are very helpful comments and I will revise my paper uh, based on your comments so one by one. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for liking it. Okay, thanks. So, was there anything to add? Uh, no, I think that's all. <laughs> Just, okay, uh, perfect. Yeah. yeah. So now let's uh, <clears throat> take a look at the questions from our audience. So the first is from uh, Xing Hao Li, our, one of our PhD student. So uh, let me read his question. How to uh, categorize the newspapers into different types uh, by the content of the articles published on it or by its uh, propi uh, proprietors? Uh, does the circulation of the newspaper matter in this context? There are several questions. Okay, I would like to reshare the slides because I mentioned this, but I, I didn't uh, I skip it. So I want to first uh, answer the last uh, question about the circulation. <laughs> sorry, <clears throat> uh, circulation, circulation. Uh, see, no, sorry. Oh, okay. Uh, about the censorship, so uh, the anti-Manchu propaganda was sent in Tokyo and Shanghai and the leaders fled to Japan. During this period, Shanghai enjoyed ex legal extra uh, territory, uh, territory status as a treaty port. The famous Suba case, so propagandist uh, Zhang Taiyan, so he published the paper criticized the Manchu court, uh, that is called the Suba case. And, uh, he was put into jail uh, into the treaty port Shanghai court uh, requested by the Qing government. And according to the Qing law, the, the, the law of the Qing dynasty, he should be ex executed with his family. But uh, based on the law in the treaty port, Shanghai treaty port, he was sentenced to, six to uh, five years, uh, or to three years. And the other guy, Zorin, was sentenced to two years in, uh, in, in, in jail. And uh, so we can see that uh, the circulation may not be a problem for these revolutionaries, even though they engage in illegal uh, activities. And uh, before 60, uh, 1906, uh, there was no systematic censorship because the uh, Ministry of the Post was not established be uh, before 1906. And uh, I actually find one evidence that uh, the Qing government uh, uh, there's a new news, news article saying that the Qing government uh, uh, found that one newspaper emailed from Japan criticized the Qing government and the, the government want to prohibit the circulation of the uh, 
newspaper in the uh, through the custom, but uh, that's just the one case. And as I showed, as I showed the spread of the newspaper, I think it was largely based on private network. So the post system may not matter uh, a lot. And then about the construction of the index, uh, characterize newspapers into different types. So for the uh, 19 revolution newspapers, I read all of the uh, 9,000 newspaper articles and uh, to find the, the keywords Manchu and Han, all the repression massacres, Yang Zhou Shi Ri, so, uh, and determine it, if this article is an is a anti Manchu article. And uh, yes, it was based on each article. It was uh, based on article and article, not newspaper. And yeah, that's my answer to the first uh, question. I think it was very great, yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, so I, I have a, a follow-up question. So it's, is that possible to, to track the distribution of these newspapers uh, geographically? Uh, for example, uh, peoples or elites in, in the inland area even though they have no any newspaper or press in this lo locality, but these guys can still learn or hear some news from the from the newspaper in Shanghai or nearby regions. Mm. Sorry, it, it, uh, I, I'm reading the question from uh, Wang Da Huan. So is that a question? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's possible to track the, the geographic distribution of the news. That's okay. basically impossible, right? Uh, there are 19 uh, newspapers, 10 was based, uh, uh, 9 was based uh, in Tokyo, and uh, 6 was based in Shanghai, oh, I see. and I the see. rest of yeah. four might be Suzhou, Chongqing, and Anqing. So uh, it's, I think uh, it's hard to chase the regional variants, but I also tried the different measures of the regional uh, variants in the index. Okay, thanks. So the next question uh, from uh, also our PhD student, uh, Wan Da Wang, uh, for the instrumental variable, I wonder about the spatial distribution of the later born cohort of Jing Shi, uh, meaning those born between 1628 uh, <clears throat> and 1644. Was it likely to be born in areas with an abundance tradition that could possibly affect their participation in revolutionary activities? Yes, so uh, this is a great question. So I uh, need me to uh, do more checks uh, for the I way. So that's the change between the trend between the early stage 1600 to 1627 uh, uh, and the Chunjian's rule. And uh, we can see that uh, the repression was based in the Southeast Asian uh, region, the Yangtze River Delta, Delta and uh, the I way the coefficient of IV is negative. So it means that uh, the change, the increase, the in increment of the Jingshi degree holders in the Chongzhen's rule was more in regions uh, outside of the Yangtze River. So it might be Shandong or Henan, so not the uh, Southeast, Asia, uh, Southeast uh, region. And uh, let me think about it. It's a little bit, uh, uh, challenging to link the surrenders to uh, in, to the Qing and to the uh, to others. Uh, yes, I would like to check, but I think uh, uh, the I is unique to this case, and uh, there's no uh, and uh, since I, I take the difference, so I think uh, there's no impact of the cultures change, cultures impact. Uh, the area is always easy to surrender to the re, to the other regime. Yeah, uh, but thanks for the comments. That's very important. Okay, so yeah, and uh, yeah, a, a new a new question just came in uh, from Professor Ping Han Liang uh, at Zhongshan University. I'm not sure about. Uh, retelling stories, 
at least there's no solid evidence to support this argument. At least Yangzhou 10 dates was clearly led and conducted by Manchus and some Han troops who took a massacre also rebelled against the Manchu later, like Li Chengdong. By the way, do you only count Man? Uh, uh, what about Hu, uh, another nomad uh, 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 tribe, which was also frequently used by revolutionaries at the time? Uh, yes, uh, thanks for the comment. Those are very important questions. First, I want to answer the second question, uh, whether I counter the, uh, the other words. Yes, I because I read uh, all the newspaper, the 10,000 newspapers from 19 uh, revolutionary newspapers. And uh, when I read the newspaper, if it appeared the word Manchu, man, all the da 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 zi, so I count all of them as uh, as the anti anti Manchu article. And the interesting point uh, is that uh, the uh, propaganda even used the racist uh, uh, dialogue to 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 propagandize their ideas. One article is called the Chou Da Zi, smelly Manchu people. <laughs> Uh, and about the first question about the retelling stories, yes, the Li Chengdong's case towards the Yangzhou, uh, that's a case I want to stress. So Li Chengdong was the Han people, so uh, he committed the massacre. And if we, if to be honest, if we uh, trace, trace the massacre, it was made by the by the Han people instead of Manchu people. Though the command was made by the Qin by Dorog, by the Qin's ruler. But uh, it, it is tricky to, to tell which one made the, committed the massacre. So, and uh, for, as, uh, another case is the Inquisition may not uh, related to the uh, repression toward the Han Chinese intellectuals. Uh, there's argument saying that the Inquisition might be just a result of the faction struggles between the different factions in the central government. So uh, I think that is like the retelling, but uh, it, it doesn't matter. I, I, I will think about it twice. Yeah. Thank you for the comments. Well, so another question from uh, Yu Jing Huang. Uh, for the construction of the instrumental variable, could you elaborate on why you classify Jin Shi between uh, 1601 and 1625 to be resisting, whereas those uh, between 1628 and 1643 to be surrendering. Is there any historical evidence? Maybe I missed this part, sex. Yes, so the argument of IV was based on the book, The Great Enterprise by uh, the scholar Frederick Wickman. So he argued that uh, for the new admitted Jinshi degree holders in the uh, Chongzhen's rule. So these guys uh, did not reach the higher uh, positions in the government. So for a career plan, they had the incentive to uh, serve the new court. But for the old guys, for uh, Jinshi degree holders who, get, who got their Jinshi between 1600 and 1625, uh, they had climbed to a higher uh, position. And even they surrender to the new court, they might uh, keep it at the same position. And the loss of them is the loyalty. So they might be criticized by their cohorts. So that's the opportunity to conserve in this decision. And I think the opportunity to conserve is exogenous to the uh, repression. Yes. Yeah, that's a very interesting book, The Great Enterprise. Uh, I remember there's a Chinese word translated as Hongye, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, yes. exactly. Okay, thanks. Well, so yeah, uh, time's out. So I think we can stop here today. Uh, thank you again, Pei Yuan, for your wonderful presentation. And uh, thank you so much, Bo Xiao, for your, for your excellent discussion. And thank uh, all, all the audience for your questions. So our next event will uh, uh, be scheduled in, in mid-May. Uh, yeah, uh, we will uh, try to announce the specific arrangement shortly. 
uh, for the audience, uh, uh, please sign up to our mailing list for the latest news for upcoming events. Okay. Thank you again. Bye.